Okay, so now we're going to look at um, a linear search. So what we're going to we have used the same file access code before, except I've done one one thing slightly differently. I've made a variable called file name and I've named it, and I'm passing it in as a parameter, which means that rather than specify the file name here all the time, I can just put in the variable called file name. Now you'll see it's exactly the same before as our previous example. Instead of names and houses, I'm using a variable called items and a variable called prices. Now I've had a look at the file and I can see that there are 200 um, prices and names in here, so I need two parallel arrays of 200 items. And what I've done is returned a variable called items array and prices array, so I'm going to store this in a variable called items and prices. So you'll see how I've been able to reuse the code from before. So. Uh, file name, file name, and rather than display details this time, I'm going to have a function to um, search for an item. And rather than display details, I'm going to call it search file. So I'm just reusing code that I've had before. And rather than putting in names, I'm going to put in items and prices. So it would be a good thing just to check that everything's working okay. I'm just going to put a print here, saying I've got here, just so I've got something in there. And if I put a breakpoint there and hit debug, and the one I'll debug is linear search. Now, just to make life easier, I've put, oh sorry, let's take those two old ones away. I've put the um, file in the same folder as my program. So I just step through. Okay, some things went wrong there because. We got our names mixed up, items and prices, so that's okay. I should really maybe just change my array, items array and prices array. So I've got a function called read the details. Yep, I've put them in items and prices and I'm searching a variable and I've got a print line. But what I've just noticed is that I forgot to adapt to my subroutine up there to take in my file name. So I'm just going to put my debug line back on there and I'm going to hit debug and I'm going to debug my program called linear search. So, file read, yep, that's okay. And it should stop there. And that looks about right. I'm just going to go and check the first line of the file. So it should be called Bracassia Moss in element 0 and the price is 974. And I often just check the last one. So the last one, or certainly as much as far as I can go along, Rockbird is about 13.2, so I could go through and find where that is, but it's probably about 100 through. But I'm going to just go and check the second and third. So second should be small flower tan tangiaster, and it should be 23.55. So yeah, that looks okay. So I'm quite confident at this point with a bit of breakpoints that my program is running okay. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm actually going to write a standard algorithm to look for something. So I'm going to ask the user to show me, to, sorry, to tell me what they want to look for. So I'm just going to use an input line and I'm going to say please enter the item to be searched for. So, and then what I need to do is look through the entire array. So if I just put some comments in, loop through entire array. Just take another thing go on there. Okay, so for i in range and it's to the length of the array. Now it doesn't matter which one I use here because they're both the same names, they're both parallel arrays, so that's fine. So for each item, what we need to do is check if it's what we look for. And we're looking at the names array. Didn't actually need to hand in the prices array now that I think about it. So if we take out the prices array there, don't actually need that one at all. So for I, what we need to say is that we need to look at every item, so if is whatever's in my items array at position i, which will start off at zero and work all the way up, if that is equal to the thing that I'm looking for, which we called search item, then we will just do a quick print message which says that the item is found in aisle, and we'll just use the position to say what aisle it's in. So aisle Position zero would be element. Uh, position zero would be aisle one. So we're just going to add variable i, and we're just going to add one to it. 
In fact, you could put the one in there. Let me just make it a little bit more readable. So, I just need to look at my code here, and I'm going to look for something called Yosemite Onion. So I'm just going to copy that there. So we don't, we're not pass, we're not returning anything, but we're passing in the variable. So we're just going to um, run that. So, yep, file seems to be in red, and I'm going to paste in this Yosemite onion. And it says it's found at aisle 7, and that looks about right. So, so far so good. Should really put a space there. But, there is one slight problem, in that if I tell it to run, if I put Yosemite onion this time, but just miss a capital letter, letter there, it's not told me anything. The main reason for that is because it's it's done a case sensitive check and unfortunately that means that it doesn't match so one way to get around this would be that we'll just quickly turn it into uppercase there and we'll turn the search string into uppercase there so it's not storing it anywhere it's just running it so if you go and run linear search again and this time it shouldn't matter if I don't type in any capitals only some Okay, it's found it again. So, our program is still working, but as we've seen before, when it didn't find it, it um, didn't say anything. And also, even though it found something, it's carried on through all 200 items because it's using a fixed loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert this program to use a conditional loop so that A, it'll stop when it finds something, and then B, it'll also have the ability to tell us whether it um, has found anything or not. So the program, the, the algorithm is going to stay largely the same, except we're going to use a Boolean variable called found. I'm going to set it to false to start off with, and that's going to tell us if an item has been found or not. And as we discussed, the for loop isn't really hugely efficient because it will go through it 200 times, even if it found something at position 1. So, I'm going to get rid of my for loop, I'm just going to comment it out just now, just so we can compare, and I'm going to use a while loop. Now, my two conditions are going to be while I'm not at the end of the list, and I've not found anything. So, because as soon as I find the end of the list, I have to stop, and as soon as I find, find the item I'm looking for, I want to stop as well. So, I'm going to use a variable called counter. And I'm going to say this is zero, and I'm going to make this one bigger. Sorry, I'm going to increment that va variable by one every time I go through an item array. So my first condition is going to be while counter is less than the length of my items array. However, that will continue still going to the end. So that's not going to really work. And I should really say that what we need to do here is put in a counter plus or equal to one. So that means that every time I go through an item, I am going to increment by one. So that will get me to the end of the array. But I only want to carry on looking and found is still equal to false. Now, if I find something, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that found is equal to the value true. So, we've just basically said that it's found it. Now the trouble is, imagine we find multiple uh, results. I'm going to get the same result lots and lots of times. For example, if I asked it to look for a pupil's name and it found that name lots and lots of times. Although not hugely efficient, I'm just going to store the first time that I find that value. So rather than printing the message there, what I'm going to say is I'm going to have a variable called found position, and I'm going to make that equal to whatever position we're at in the loop, so that later on what I can say is the item was found, and rather than using the i plus one, we can use our variable called found position. So if I just oh sorry, that should have been a double equals and a missing a colon. So we're going to look for the same thing again because we know Yosemite Onion is in aisle 7. So if we hit um, run, file is still red, and if we just put in, sorry, Yosemite Onion, now i is not defined. 
So if we look at this, we'll see that we actually called our variable uh, counter. So sorry, that should be sorry. Okay. So if we just clear that error message and run it again. So and we're looking for Yosemite onion, which if I remember rightly was at aisle seven. I'll just copy and paste that so we can use it again. Okay. And yet again we've got another I. So when we've been converting code here, it's not worked. So it's telling me it's in line thirty four. Found position is an I. We actually changed that variable to counter. So again, you'll send me onion. So items found in aisle seven. Now the trouble is, if we tell it to look for something that isn't there, so if I tell it to look for Yosemite Pumpkin, I'm pretty sure that isn't in the file. In fact, I've even misspelled it, so that's fine. The trouble is, it's now going horribly, horribly wrong, because it's trying to display the variable called found position, but found position was never even set. Now we could have got around that error message by just saying found position is zero. But the trouble is, all that would tell me is that, so if I put Yosemite Pumpkin, it'll tell me it's found in aisle 1. Why is it saying aisle 1? Because found position has never been changed, so it's still sitting at 0. So what we need to do is we need to be able to use the if statement to tell me whether something's been found or not. So we're using the variable called found, so if found is true, then we know that we found something, so we can print it in there, and then we can just use an else, and we'll just print the same line again, sorry, so else we will print, sorry, item not found, so sorry, no item with that description, and close our speech marks, take out the double M, so now if we go and run the code looking for a value that doesn't exist, So you send me a pumpkin. It'll now tell us that there's no item with that description. 